My name is Kavi Arya. Um, I am faculty in the computer science department and uh, one of the subjects that I teach is embedded systems. Embedded systems basically are uh, the intelligence if you like embedded in devices and it needs a totally different approach to build these kind of systems as opposed to your conventional software systems like your banking verticals and uh, conventional software like spreadsheets and all these kind of things. So what I would like to share with you uh, in this short kind of 20 minutes uh, presentation that I have is um, an interesting project at IIT Bombay which we would like you to participate in in some way called e yantra So what we have done is that over the last 5 years in teaching embedded systems through a distance education program, we found it very difficult to motivate students. So we found that unless students have actually programmed and done a lab where they have made things move and lights flash and things like that, they do not seem to have learnt very much. So we came up with this idea of teaching through robotics. A robot is a very nice um, uh, instance of an embedded system. So over the last 5 years, we have developed a range of robots in the lab which now we have started uh, spreading through engineering colleges. We have covered some uh, 180 engineering colleges all over the country. We have just come back from giving a very exciting um, workshop in Srinagar in Kashmir. And at the moment while we are talking there are there is a workshop going on at IIT Bombay for the colleges of uh, Mumbai University. And the vice chancellor himself has insisted that all his engineering colleges be exposed uh, to our uh, workshop. So what we have done is that 55 engineering colleges and from each engineering college one faculty and two students are attending this workshop and we have a series of 5 back to back workshops. And what we are doing is that we are starting them with the first few steps towards um, an interest in robotics through the robotics workshop that we have developed and I will show you some examples toward the, uh, the end of this uh, talk as to what you can do once you have attended uh, this workshop. So a little bit about this e yantra project, incidentally this is just a small part of the embedded systems course that we teach, right. As part of the course, we give our own students in the MTech program a two day workshop like this to get them acquainted with the robots on which they will do all their assignments. Right. So a little bit about this, so I will talk a bit about uh, robots for college education and for doing much more than that and uh, talk about the present uh, status of um, our project. But one, one, one little thought I would like to share with you, it might not be anything about engineering but it is just to indicate with you that no predictions based on the past are valid nowadays because the world is changing so fast. I often share this uh, statistic with uh, our students that it, I heard this at a talk by a leading stockbroker uh, Ramdev Agarwal at uh, uh, a talk. He said that it has taken India 60 years to become a trillion dollar economy. Trillion dollars is when the world starts looking at you differently. You become a huge market, you become empowered, you are a rich man basically and it is taken 60 years. That means 2008 India crossed that mark. And how long do you think it is going to take for 2 trillion dollars? Anybody would volunteer in the audience here? 2 trillion dollars, how long is it going to take us from 2008? 10 years is a possibility. Actually, it is about 6 to 7 years for 2 trillion dollars. So, in about 2013 or 14, we will reach there. We have already gone past or crossed the 1.5 trillion mark, right. And from there, we are on the same growth path as China, right. Now, for the economy to grow like this, we have to be doing things very differently. So I tell all the students that stop listening to your parents, for instance, about uh, guidance and career. Because their, their, their picture is of a slow moving country 30, 40 years ago. India is totally different. How many of us would have predicted the way mobile phones have penetrated the country in the last 5 years even, nobody would have. Similarly, computers, software, in innovation in technology, embedded systems, right. 
there is a big need for automation in this in this country now like for instance if you want to if you are a, uh, a person growing flowers outside the Pune uh, floriculture right you cannot grow flowers manually if you want to export you cannot meet those quality requirements for export if you are growing flowers manually you need to have greenhouses with highly regulated environments which can only be done through automation and all this technology at the moment is being bought from outside from the Dutch through Indo Dutch collaborations through Israel or what have you right and this is not rocket science there is no reason why we cannot do it ourselves right even the demography is changing of the country right? buys are very difficult to get nowadays jadu pocha you know basic cleaning and swabbing in the house we need automation for these things we need inventors to build these kind of things so we want to see if we can grow this kind of different in mi difference in mindset and our workshop if you like our uh, e-antra project and our course is a medium through which we are trying to effect change right so this is the slide that I normally uh, start with in my course which each icon represents an application domain for embedded systems and uh, I invite the audience to consider which of these application domains does not have an embedded system in it okay any volunteers here go on syringe any others okay I'll share with you the kind of feedback one gets syringe handcuffs violin scarecrow is a popular one okay now let me just talk about the scarecrow right uh, handcuffs is a forensic applications you heard of those students in America who got the RFID tags attached to them to make sure to just track them right so uh, uh, police and the forensic applications lots and lots of applications of embedded systems surveillance cameras automatically checking up on things even nowadays restaurants and malls have got cameras which are doing real time image processing counting the number of heads which are coming in face recognition is happening a lot right so a camera is looking at who's coming in and matching the face like you have on picasa if you upload some pictures it tells you which of your friends are there in the picture automatically right music is the biggest driver of embedded systems a scarecrow uh, a friend who is director of an agricultural institute asked me for a scarecrow automatic scarecrow he says i have to imply four buys on my hybrid fields and i'm paying 12000 rupees a month why can't we just build a small automated thing which can shoo away birds so my students built it as an embedded systems a project a cost project right and there is much more one can do with it there is a company being being, uh, being uh, incubated here called agrocom which deploys little weather stations in fields in uh, in the grape growing district of Maharashtra in Nasik and those machines in the field have an effective range of 2-3 kilometers and they are monitoring leaf wetness temperature humidity and helping you uh, predict pest attacks and crop diseases by sending you an sms okay so like i said everywhere you have this kind of stuff right local innovation we've been encouraging when we went to kashmir we said that think of all your local industry needs right how can you improve agriculture horticulture all these kind of things using technology and don't look westwards for solutions because you might get the solutions but they're too expensive and then you won't be able to compete with those guys right when you just want to absorb technology within the country it's okay to buy it but if you want to compete with them then you can't buy it you have to build it yourself and it can be done okay robots for college education so this is the society that we need to prepare ourselves for right we want to create engineers who can build these complex machines right we need to, no problem comes to you with a little label saying that i'm an electrical engineering problem or i'm a computer science problem it's up to you to crack the problem whichever way you want it can be cracked mechanically electronically software wise or what have you right so just think of the way an ipod was designed or an ipad was designed or some interesting applications like that okay it was not designed by this software oriented view the here's a requirement specification now build me an ipad right it's designed by a cross disciplinary team of engineers who sit down and negotiate if the guy wants to put a bigger battery for longer use right then the chap will say that hey I can't do that you can't fit more than this size battery then he has to be very intelligent about the software algorithms he uses right in order to fit that much time of use 
within the machine. Then you need to negotiate with the display guy and the manufacturing guy, right, who says, okay, if you put that battery, it will become too fat and you need to make it more thin and so on. So anyway, this is what we need to achieve to create more such engineers and we do it by engaging with colleges, conducting workshops and uh, partnering with them and creating and harvesting open source content. So one of the big problems we had is any college that I had gone to in the past which had interest in robotics, if the student wanted to do a, a project, he couldn't because you don't get a robot in the market and then he had to build a robot to do an application and by the time he's built a robot, his time is up and again next year the same thing starts again. So we tackled that problem by designing this robot over the last five years, it's called the the Firebird robot in this uh, case and we have created an ecosystem where we have a company that manufactures, distributes and so on and this is a kind of thing on which you can do a lot of interesting BE projects and more. It is used as a research vehicle for us also. It has a bunch of uh, proximity sensors in front which can sense up to one and a half meters um, uh, to millimeter accuracy, it has got a board at the bottom which does all the signal conditioning, it's got output in the form of an LCD, uh, it's got a daughter board on top, right, which can drive it with a variety of processors. You can have a daughter board for 8051, for Atmega 2560, for ARM 7 and what have you, right. And if all you want to do is give our workshops, then you can use these robots which are 2000 rupees. One is, is 15,000 and one is 2000. So you can get started with a robot club using these kind of robots and so on. Okay, so a lot of open source content, all the robots are open source, a lot of documentation, software, hardware manuals, everything is on the e -yantra project website and when we give these workshops, students can uh, go away uh, with a CD with everything on it and uh, microcontroller concepts have become very easy to teach. A faculty reflected to me that, sir, what you have done in this workshop, it takes us six months to get to it in our curriculum. Right? But in the first two days, we just hit you with it and it works. Okay? And we use it um, to teach a variety of courses like microcontrollers, embedded systems, mechatronics, control systems, what have you. Okay? And this just gives you a flavor of the robot development. Five years ago, we saw very expensive robots and then we came up with our own, right? which are the ones on the right hand side and then we have ruggedized them. And this is a painful process that we've been through. A very kludgy looking robot in 2005, and we put it into a floppy disk case, and then we sort of tried to improve it. And finally, we've come to we've also tried a lab in a box where you construct your own robot, and then deploy. But we found that this doesn't work with computer science students; they're terrified of hardware. Okay, so um, this is where we've reached. This is the ARM 7 robot. This is a variety of of adapter boards that uh, uh, sit on the robot with uh, different uh, processes which drive it. This is the actuation change to wheels, in, uh, to, to tracks instead of wheels and this is with uh, our basic robot board can, uh, can drive about 4 DC motors or 18 servo motors, right. So with that you can have a variety of locomotion, you can have the Omnibot with 3 wheels and each of the wheels has got smaller wheels on it so you can differentially drive those wheels to actuate left, right, front, back, this, that and the other. You can have a hexabot, right, six-legged insect kind of thing, crab kind of thing and once we built it, we wondered what to do with it. So we just gave some BE projects and students did some interesting things with it. And more important than the robot is the software because software is what helps you solve problems. We have the robot ported under Microsoft Robotics Studio, under uh, 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 you, you, uh, you can write C to drive it or you can use Estrel, Luster Code or MATLAB or Scilab, right. So a lot of software environments you can use to actually program these things to solve interesting problems, okay. This is what the Microsoft Robotics Studio environment looks like for visual programming. Then you can do a physically based simulation of the robot before you actually deploy the code with the press of a button on the real robot, okay. The content factory if you like which creates the open source content is our undergraduate and postgraduate uh, courses where in the last five weeks they do a project, okay. So we have a laptop and a robot for every two students to do all the assignments and then they do a five week uh, project in teams of four, right. So uh, lots of workshops, this is just flashing some slides of the various institutions which have been through us, 
right this is what the workshop with uh, the faculty looks like in the lab. There was in an interesting workshop in December 2009 Professor Nagla from uh, NIT Jalandhar came. He went back and gave the same workshop to his students and used the robot that he gave us and they built a nice project he was very excited he wrote, uh, he wrote a very nice letter to us and his students built a very cute cleaning robot which they deployed in barber shops to clean up they put a vacuum cleaner and they kind of cleaned the shop right. So the, these are the kinds of stories we like to hear from our uh, friends who attended the workshops okay. So we have a scale up plan but our main plan is how to get students uh, started in robotics how to empower them to solve problems and how to address the challenge of entrepreneurship and all these kind of things okay. So I won't take too much of your time now I'll just go to the end actually. So our learning is that we want to spread the study and use of robotics in colleges we want to build a multidisciplinary manpower and the main metric we assess now to see how much of an impact we made is by seeing the number of BE projects which we have influenced in the engineering colleges right. So BE projects if you folks are interested in uh, being a part of this e yantra um, experiment if you like it is not so much an experiment we know it works and it works uh, pretty well now and you want to start a robotics uh, club in your college and you want to inspire interesting BE projects be in touch with us um, go to the e yantra website mail me if you like uh, my address is available at IIT Bombay kavi at cse.iitb.ac.in I am on the computer science website and what I shall do is because we do not have time I shall show you the videos of a few of the projects of the kind of projects the students have done. This is a batch which happened at the end of uh, 2010. So this is students who have taken the hexapod and they have made it write out some uh, letters that is the first useful thing that we did with it right as you can see H E X and they have learned some very useful things it in the process. Then another bunch uh, built in this, uh, locomotion project, using the hexapod the so they made the hexapod the hexapod climb this obstacle and then performs various dance moves on the top of this obstacle. Yeah in fact it can go more. So another lot made the robot climb a staircase and once it climbed the staircase it did something interesting right uh, what would students do right they made it dance okay you cannot hear the music here huh? we cannot hear it but they can hear it okay. So then it is kind of dancing it looks quite cute as it is right so that is what the robot does. And another bunch of students built an artist bot right which is um, it is a robot that we visually captured a picture then they did image processing on it to skeletonize it turn it into vectors and then one robot mounts a marker pen on its pod the camera pod it mounts a marker pen and it reproduces that image okay. So without knowing it these guys have built a plotter driver now it is up to other projects to take this code this basic code which is already there and build it into a more complex code like the projects we got after this is some students built a rangoli robot there you mount you mount a rangoli dispenser and it can go to a mall and maybe make a picture by doing a raster scan and, and uh, dropping rangoli powder right so that is an uh, and there is another group after that which did uh, a project where they have used the sensors inside an android phone a Motorola phone in this case to drive the robot. So by tilt it is used the tilt and uh, gyroscopic uh, sensors in the phone to control the robot. So you tilt it forward it goes forward tilt it side it goes side and so on and they also had to build a bluetooth interface a small board which goes on the robot all these things are done in 5 weeks time right. Then there is another bunch of students who had an electrical engineer amongst them who helped them build uh, uh, a glove control robot where you put a circuit board with uh, sensors on it and you control the robot with your hand. Okay. The cable that you see there is only a power cable because the batteries do not last very long right so 
so many students are doing their projects. Here is a tennis ball collector robot where you do image processing to spot a ball, an orange ball and then you move the robot towards it right and go and pick up that, that ball and drop it in the blue bin. Okay, so, all this is based on MATLAB, but we have, uh, uh, we have flavors on open source software like Scilab and stuff like this, right. So, it is going and it is going to deposit that in the blue box, okay. I will stop immediately after this one because I think time is short. So, this just gives you a flavor of the kind of things that students can do and they get very excited and once the main thing is to get excited about what you are doing and you do very interesting things, right. So, what we are encouraging students to do is to take previous projects and build on it, make them more complex, made, make them applicable in, in uh, per, per different domains and stuff like that. There is a lot to do and we have about 100 such projects uploaded on the website, the source code, the documentation, the report a spoken tutorial which leads you through how to set up and run the project itself. So, you could not want anything more, right. And uh, we are using this to seed a large number of BE projects. See, one more thing is students do not realize how important a BE project is, right, because the BE project is the sign of their maturity if you like as engineers. If a guy has just done say a database application for a library and comes to us, right, we are less impressed than if he has done something a bit more impressive. So, the first thing that we do when we are interviewing students for projects or for, um, for any position here or even for m -techs and stuff like that is that we talk to them about the BE project because that tells you the mark of a student, right. What is the level of sophistication? So, what we have done is that we have created an environment with which you can motivate the teaching of computer science and IT and stuff like that using these robots and we have a large amount of open source content there to help you all. And uh, the first step is to contact us and then we will take you from there, organize workshops and do whatever is required. And this is if you like a taster for the embedded systems course which we will be running for uh, uh, the faculty through the same medium in December, but that is a separate process. So, this is just to share with you the e Antra project and, 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 and to invite you to be a part of it by writing to us. The project website is uh, e-yantra.org and I suggest that if you have any uh, queries or you would like to arrange a workshop, I suggest you go to the website and let us know. We have a, a presence on uh, Facebook also and uh, you can uh, check us out e-yantra on Facebook and uh, my email address is uh, kavi at uh, cse.iitb.ac.in and uh, do be in touch with us if you want to get started in robotics at your college and we will be happy to help with whatever is required, okay. Thank you.